ladies and gentlemen, there are 5 million people plus that have been brought into Europe in the last four years. 80% of them are military age men, according to Interpol. The United Nations ran a public program to recruit jihadists from the Arab Spring, from Africa, from the Middle East, from Eastern Europe, from places like Chechnya, to come to Germany, France, Belgium, Sweden, the UK, Canada, the United States. And they have pledged allegiance to ISIS and Al-Qaeda. They have pledged allegiance to attack our countries. And then every time there's an attack, which you're intensifying all the time, with the shootings, the truck attacks, the bombings, the media comes out, and I've got articles on Infowars.com, and blames conservatism and says that Islamophobia is what is making these people attack us. That story is up on Infowars.com, where the left was very, very quick to come out and bemoan Islamophobia backlash on social media following Manchester terror attack. So not only is the left and these globalist systems we have to blame for bringing in these vipers, on top of it, they blame those of us that have warned of it and say it's our fault. And then a bunch of well-meaning teenagers, some of them children, I don't know why you let your kids go to a rock concert when they're eight years old, get attacked. And I point out it's liberal, wide open UK, and the liberal policies that are to blame for that in the aggregate, on average, more than half the Brits are the liberal trendies that would walk off a plank, who would jump off of a cliff, who would slit their own wrist, cut their own heads off. If they were told it was trendy. And it's so sad to see mass Stockholm syndrome. I don't blame the victims. I blame the culture, the brainwashing, the globalist for turning people into cult members who will go along with religions and systems that are diametrically opposed to their own supposed beliefs. It's sick, but then Media Matters, David Brock, comes out. Because what do you do? What do you do when you push this agenda of open borders and bringing in the Islamicist and they keep raping people and they keep and, and, you know killing people and they're... Uh, fit the bill for the, being the refugees that we call them. What do you do? You turn it around and you say, oh no, it's the right winger's fault. It's Alex Jones's fault. He stirred up the Muslims or he blames the children that got blown up. No, I blame the parents and I blame the liberals and I blame anyone who called for open borders to bring these rattlesnakes in. If I bring a rattlesnake in and stick it under your bed and it bites you, it's my fault. But if you know I've stuck a rattlesnake in there and you go along with it as well, you become part of it as... That's just common sense logic. They are the ones that are guilty, the people like Media Matters. That's the headline with the tweets and the news article headlines at Infowars.com. Leftists bemoan Islamophobia backlash on social media following Manchester terrorist attack and basically blame Christians for stirring up the Muslims we need to submit to their religion. We need to put our women in hijabs. We need to have the feminist groups go out and scream Allah Akbar uh, in the town squares all over the United States and all over Europe. And that will make the Islamists stop attacking us. All over the news, they're asking, who is the accomplice to the reported uh, bomber that CBS News and Drudge Report and others are now reporting, Salman Abedi? Who are the accomplices? Let me tell you, the Democratic Party. The Labour Party of the UK, Merkel's party in Germany, people like Macron that says Islamic attacks are now part of life, just accept it. And the riots and the rapes and the car attacks and the stabbings and the shootings and the no-go zones everywhere. And the mayor of London declaring it London stand and saying that it's now part of life, just accept terror. It's never called Islamist. That's who's aiding and abetting. They keep saying, who was helping him? How did he do it? They've brought back thousands and thousands, just 1,600 the last few months, have come back into Europe and back into the UK who were actual ISIS fighters and who were on watch list. There are more than 4,000 total 
on ISIS watch lists just in the UK alone and thousands more a month coming into Europe that Interpol allows in. They know they're ISIS fighters, they know they're Al Qaeda, they know they're Wahhabist, and they let them back into the countries. So you ask who's behind this? The UN, the globalists, the refugee programs, George Soros pushing it. The UN certifies it's safe to bring them in, does no background checks, lets in known ISIS fighters, orders our State Department to let them in. That's what we live under. And it's the same thing in the UK, where the EU orders the UK on who to let in. And if the UK doesn't let in ISIS fighters, they're fined up to 100,000 pounds for refusing entry. And they're talking about charging more. They're talking about a million euros. Just type it into Google if you don't accept that. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure many of the parents of the young people that were at this concert, many were adults, many were tweenies, many were teens. Most of the adults probably there don't like having open borders to Islam. But I guarantee you, a lot of the parents do want to go along with bringing in radical Islam. And bottom line, they are now responsible for this animal bombing and killing 22 plus people. The parents that call for open borders and call for appeasement are just as guilty as Macron and Merkel and Hillary Clinton and Obama and all the rest of them. You're the ones that have these dead children's blood on your hands. You're the trendies that love this. I was at the mall yesterday with my children. And many of the shops I walked by, like Gap, we have some footage we can roll in a minute show women and hijabs on their front billboards. The number one thing they're promoting is women and hijabs. It is absolutely being force-fed to us. Just a few months ago at the inauguration, I saw them handing out thousands of American flag hijabs to women, and I couldn't believe it. It turned out it was officially run by Muslims, and George Soros funded it, and that it was an induction into Islam, and then we see it all over the news, USA Today, you name it, women wearing the hijab, even if they're not Muslims, to stand against Trump. You just had the truck attack killing a bunch of people in Stockholm, Sweden. They wouldn't show the dead and dying people. They don't want to show you the dead teenagers and dead young people up close from Manchester, close to where Paul Watson's from. And then they have the nerve at Media Matters, openly funded by George Soros, the Nazi collaborator to come out and say, Alex Jones blames the victims. And then they have their own people quoted and they're saying, kill me, shoot me, murder me. Well, I guess your Islamists will probably try. But what I actually said was, upwards of half the population in Britain in polls or more want open borders and Muslims to be brought in. And so these are the people that are guilty of this. And you are guilty if you promoted this aiding and abetting people that just went like cowards and bombed a bunch of innocent children. But see, an upside-down bizarro world, you have to invert it and say conservatives and libertarians and nationalists and just common-sense people, we made the Muslims bad, we, we made them attack us, we have to appease them, we have to bow down to them, we have to go along with them better, and then everything would have been okay. Paul Joseph Watson joins us from London, England. We are then joined, ladies and gentlemen, at the bottom of the hour by some of the other witnesses to what happened from the UK as well. Paul, Paul Watson will then be hosting the fourth hour. And we have Tommy Robinson again, uh, who's been on the front lines of exposing this. He'll be joining us coming up in about 20 minutes. But Paul Watson joins us right now. And then I'm going to play the clips of the mayor of London saying, just get used to it. <laughs> just get used to it, baby. You're going to get cucked and cucked hard. And it's not his fault, though. It's my fault. Media Matters doesn't say he shows any blame. It's me. George Soros, the Nazi collaborator, says it's my fault. It's your fault because you didn't bring in enough Muslims. You didn't cut enough genitals off women. You didn't put enough headdresses on them. You didn't bow down enough. You didn't give in enough. You didn't submit enough. You read the media matters, it's like, I'm sick of Christians. We got a Christian problem. In the comments, we're going to get this Christian Jones. Like, I bet it's Muslims in there saying, kill me. And then we want to kill Jones. Yeah, let's kill him. Yeah, we're liberal. Let's kill him. It's his fault the Muslims killed people. It's Christians, though. They're the bad ones. Well, don't worry. 
What's left of a Christian culture just got bombed yesterday. God, you're in a group of foaming at the mouth mental patients. We have a real problem in this country and around the world, and I'm not afraid to call it by the name radical Christian extremism. Well, let me give you statistics from your own UN, bud. There at Media Matters. Christians are the number one persecuted group in the world, doubling everybody else, and that amount of attacks on Christians has doubled in the last decade. It's growing exponentially. And that's what Trump talked about now. Let's go to Paul Joseph Watson from London, England. To break this down, we have 22 dead, more than 50 injured. And the media is saying, why'd this happen? It's completely out of the blue. They tried to cover it up as an Islamic attack for 24 hours. It failed. Now the government of the UK has come out and said it is Islamic. The uh, pitiful, slimy, disgusting, cowardly, uh, out of control, uh, ISIS people have taken credit. And the answer is bring more Islamists in. And I'll say this, I don't blame all the police. But, but the ones on top in the bureaucracy and the security services that just use these attacks to get more power but never stop the jihadis, Paul, they're to blame as well. Paul, who's to blame for this? Alex, the people to blame are the political class who have ranked in matter of importance tolerance above the basic function of government, which is protecting the lives of its people. They think it's now more important to rank tolerance above that. What is tolerance? Tolerance of Muslim rape gangs that abduct young girls and abuse them for years and years and years. And the authorities don't do anything about it because it's politically incorrect. That's tolerance. Tolerance of Sharia law. Tolerance of women being abused and harassed on the street. Tolerance is now more important than the basic right to life. You were talking about um, political correctness before, Alex. You know, with the San Bernardino killings, we saw the neighbors were getting suspicious. They were taking in these suspicious parcels before the attacks. They were meeting with suspicious people. There was an incident right before this bombing last night in Manchester, and an eyewitness has come out and talked about it. She saw what was obviously, although she didn't say it directly, a foreign individual, probably a Muslim individual, looking nervous, looking suspicious, fidgeting with something in her bag, looking back to the area where the bomb went off. She reported this woman. It looked like it was possibly one of the accomplices. She reported her to the security. What did the security say? They said to the woman who was trying to report the suspicious activity, how would you like it if somebody said that you were being suspicious? So it was obviously by the way she was describing it, because she said she couldn't speak English very well, it was obviously possibly some kind of accomplice to this attack. The security did nothing about it. They didn't kick her out. They didn't even talk to her. They just left her alone. So it looks like that could have happened again. Again, that's not confirmed. But in the aftermath of this, Alex, what do we see again? Liberals, leftists, more outraged about offensive tweets than mangled dead kids, than kids with body parts missing. That's what they're more offended about. The Met Police in London has come out and said they're investigating not the ISIS terrorists, the hundreds of ISIS terrorists running around the country who have been let back in. No, 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 no. They're investigating Katie Hopkins because she said something offensive on Twitter. They're actually doing this. This is what she said on Twitter. Western men, these are your wives, your daughters, your sons. Stand up, rise up, demand action. Do not carry on as normal. That is hate speech and is now being investigated by the Metropolitan Police after it was reported to them by offended leftists on Twitter. That's right. And Let Tommy Robinson's joining us. He's the guy that first reported over a decade ago that they were kidnapping and grooming young girls. Now it's come out in dozens and dozens of towns, thousands per town, sex slavery, killing the young girls. And the police will do nothing because it's politically incorrect to talk bad about a bunch of men with big beards grabbing 10-year-old girls from the bus stops. I mean, this is just so over the top, the mass Stockholm syndrome uh, that we're witnessing here, Paul. And it's Stockholm syndrome on steroids. The Independent came out with a headline this morning, quote, there's only one way Britain should respond to attacks such as Manchester. That is by carrying on exactly as before. Just, just carry on, just forget about it. Just wait until it happens again and again and again and again. You know, Alex, how, how do the parents of dead kids just carry on exactly as before? How do the teenage girls who have been dismembered, how are they going to carry on with life just as it was before? No, that's not bravery to just carry on like nothing's happening. That's frigging cowardice. 
But it seems, Alex, we've made a choice as a society. Again, our leaders uh, place hurt feelings. They rank that as being more important than the actual basic survival and safety of their citizens. Well, sure, this That's is this is trauma-based mind control. They know these attacks are coming. They know that the trendies are being targeted. They know the helpless population has been domesticated into this position. And they are testing to just see what you'll put up with, what you'll go along with. I mean, first it's have taxpayers pay for sex changes. Then it's, oh, it's bad if you have a mother or father or if you're male or female. Now having a sex is bad. Now having your own identity is bad unless it's a liberal, trendy identity because this isn't liberal or trendy. This is an assault on the West. They'll use Islam. They'll use pedophile groups. They'll use anybody they can to scramble civilization to make us so confused uh, with learned helplessness that we will then submit. I want to play this clip. This is so surreal. This was happening as the bombs had just gone off. They're now saying probably two bombs. A coordinated effort, but again, who's behind it? Who helped them? The government. Who protected them? The liberals. Who went along with it? The trendies. Who, who helped import these groups? Who backed ISIS and Al-Qaeda in the Arab Spring? European and the U.S. government. The globalists are allied with radical Islam. Manchester Arena terror attack. No problems here message. This is Sky News announcer tries to calm the crowd. This is, I guess, a Sky event. Exiting the arena, but goes a little too far. A little too far. It's like, drink your Kool-Aid. Everything's fine. You'll be in heaven soon. Goes a little too far by claiming preemptively that there are no problems here. And, quote, we're glad you came out and had a good time tonight. As if he were oblivious to the fact that someone just blew themselves up. So he's there announcing uh, there at the uh, Ariana Grande concert. Ariana Grande, it's so fun. And nothing bad happened here tonight. Nothing went on. You had a great evening. Your steak was perfect. You know, at, like they say at restaurants, your, your wine was perfect. Your suicide bomb and flesh and guts and blood of teenagers was wonderful. You had a fabulous evening. People say, oh, this is Stockholm Syndrome. This is mind control. This is Jim Jones Kool-Aid drills. It is. This is just one step more extreme of the media saying, move along. No big deal. The answer is bring in more Muslims. Have our young girls wear hijabs. That will make the Muslims not kill us. Let's submit to them. Let's let them bully us. Let's roll over, uh, you know, when we bring in folks from some areas in, in the Middle East that are... Uh, 5,000 times plus more often to have birth defects or, or brain disorders from inbreeding. Let's bring in a bunch of inbred insane people and let them murder and kill us and kidnap our children and do everything because it's liberal and it's the right thing to do. And let's let the big brain bug Muslims bring in all of the little subgroups they're controlling and, and then own factories and facilities and have their little elves, uh, brain damaged inbred elves in there working in their basically slave factories. I mean, this is an absolute absolute total takeover and our elites are out to get us here is the mind control uh, right after the bombing telling folks they all had a great evening ladies and gentlemen please take your time there's no need to bunch up there's no problems here just take your time and keep exiting the building there's no need to bunch up and run take your time there's no problems here Thank you for coming and having a good time tonight. Everything is fine. Just take your time exiting the building. Thank you very much. Parents, thanks for bringing your kids to the event. And no one's going to try to stop the Muslims coming in and blowing you up. And some will argue, well, they don't want, they don't want rioting. They don't want people stampeding and dying. You don't have to lie to them. You just say, please move orderly to the exits. Uh, it appears the event is over. Whatever. But see... The government's bringing in the Muslims. It's bringing in the unvetted Muslims. It's bringing in the thousands of jihadis, knowing this is going to happen. It's not like the media is saying, be calm, everything's going to be okay, we're going to fix this problem, we're going to deport these people. No, no, they're just saying, be calm, everything's fine, drink the Kool-Aid, you're going to be in heaven. Paul Watson. Well, Alex, the point is they're not just letting them in. And I'm going to do a big video expose about this as well. The NGO boats, this is all George Soros funded, and I'm going to name the organizations by name. They're going out like a taxi service to 12 miles off the coast of Libya from Italy, picking up these migrants, bringing them back to Italy. Half of them just go missing, while ISIS is literally paying their fee to pay the people smugglers if they join ISIS. And ISIS said, ISIS said three years ago, quote, 
We're going to have a migrant flood to flood you with our jihadists and bring Europe down. The U.N. says yes, opens it up, advertises it. It's a master plan, Paul. They've admitted it. What is the master plan bringing in the sleeper cell army of 5 million plus people, 80 percent military age men? What are they planning? Well, on a, on a purely selfish level, again, the elite, the political elite, they don't have to live amongst this. They get private chauffeurs to every single event. They live in their ivory towers. They don't have to use public transport. They don't have to use commercial airlines. You know, they're, they're protected from this. We're not. So they don't really have to live in the chaos that they create. Of course, politically, bringing in huge numbers of people, you can, you can do a map where in Britain you compare the areas where the Muslim ghettos are versus who they vote for, it's always left-wing political parties who will give them welfare and benefits. Same in any other European country. So that's the motive. They want huge voting blocks. They want to literally destroy society. They don't value or cherish Western values anymore. They've replaced them with this horrific tolerance idea, which is clearly not working for us, but they don't care because they're in their ivory towers. But this suicide bomber, Alex, uh, Libyan refugee parents was born in Manchester. So we gave his parents refuge in the United Kingdom. They gave us a suicide bomber. Oh, but this guy was born here. So Alex, he's one of the integrated ones. He's another example of how multiculturalism has worked so well. Born in this country, blows himself up along with 22, 23 other, pe other people. But don't worry, Alex, because CNN's Jake Tapper tweeted out an image of the Union Jack. So everything's going to be OK now. And that's what annoys me the most is the concern signaling. Well, that's what the they virtue do. Sig exactly. Virtue signaling. They push for the end of the Union Jack. They try to say, don't fly it. It's racist. First, they you know, ban uh, uh, what, what the King George flag and a bunch of others. And so then they move on. But then when there's a tragic event, oh, here's your flag, while the globalists are busy killing the culture, killing the identity. But then they kind of give you as a body bag, a, a Union Jack uh, colored body bag. Notice, though, Alex, he didn't tweet out a Russian flag last month when all those people got massacred in the St. Petersburg subway, did he? Oh, no. It's, it's selective outrage. Also, again... Not all Muslims. The main concern immediately after 22 people, mostly teenage girls, have been slaughtered and dismembered is not what do we do to stop this from happening over and over again? It's, oh, no, somebody might be mean to Muslims. Don't be an Islamophobe. That's the main concern. No, it's not the main concern. It shouldn't be. And by but the way, when Muslims Dylan Roof went in, when scumbag Dylan Roof went in and shot you know, nine poor black people because he was a you know, brainwashed idiot, the media for months, it was the end of the world, America's evil, all conservatives are racist, all whites are racist. Yeah. You've got a brown Muslim guy going and blowing up mainly a bunch of little white girls. Are folks going to call this racial? Because a big component of Islam is anti-white, anti-West. Let's just get that out there. Well, here's a tweet, Alex, and it exemplifies this. It says, and this literally got like 50, 60,000 retweets. Muslims are to blame when in reality, Muslim taxi drivers are offering free lifts. Okay, so because some Muslim taxi drivers are offering free rides, that means there's not a problem with Islam and violence. No, it doesn't work like that. But that is the level of idiocy we're dealing with. That is literally the most tweeted thing today on Twitter. That's what we're dealing with. Again, empty platitudes. Really, you know what's celebrity. funny? The last few times I was in the UK, it was almost all Muslim taxi drivers. They would shake me down for double the rate to take me to my hotel, laughing at me until I would run into a British taxi driver, and they would let me in and actually only charge me the regular rate and apologize to me and say, you know, this is London stand now, mate. Yeah, but it's, again, look at the stats, okay? It's not a tiny fringe. 34% of British Muslims say they would not inform police if they knew someone was getting involved with ISIS. 34%, sorry, only 34% would inform. So in fact, the vast majority of British Muslims would not tell police if someone they knew was joining ISIS. We saw the same thing in Belgium after Paris. But attacks. it's not the Muslims' fault. It's conservatives, nationalists, libertarians, and it's my fault, Paul. Media Matters is saying it's my fault. I'm a bad fact. I don't like the children that died. Total lie. 
I'm saying the trendies in the UK that say open the borders up, bring this in, they're to blame. And you know that stadium had adults and others that were in it that totally are cuckled and are pushing for this. The left has to embrace it. You love Islam. You love sexual mutilation. You love hijabs. Paul Watson. Alex Jones. and Be safe. Tommy Robinson from the UK as well coming up. Stay with us. Families and many young people were out to enjoy a concert at the Manchester Arena and have very sadly lost their lives. Our thoughts are with those 22 victims that we now know have died, the 59 people who have been injured and their loved ones. We continue to do all we can to support them and they are being treated at eight hospitals across Greater Manchester. We have been treating this as a terrorist incident and we believe at this stage the attack last night was conducted by one man. The priority is to establish whether he was acting alone or as part of a network. The attacker, I can confirm, died at the arena. We believe the attacker was carrying an improvised explosive device which he detonated, causing this atrocity. We would ask people not to speculate on his details or share names. This is a complex and wide-ranging investigation. Our priority is to work with the National Counter-Terrorist Policing Network and UK Intelligence Services to establish more details about the individual who carried out this attack. They're also everywhere saying, we don't know who helped him. How did this happen? The government of the UK opened the borders up. Bipartisanly, they brought these people in. They demonize anybody that spoke out against it or stood up. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they've been uh, uh, engaged in. I'm not saying the individual police officers are to blame, but basically everyone in the UK, everyone in the US, everyone in Europe, I don't care what color you are or where you came from, if you're not an Islamic extremist, an Islamic Orthodox attacker, we all are to blame for not standing up against the arrogance of the Islamicist leaders and their puppets. Uh, like the new French president who has said, get used to Islamic terror, it's the new way of life, just get used to it. We're not going to call it Islamic terror when it happens, we're just going to call it terror. Well, here is the mayor of London stand, Sadiq Khan, who's starting to ban images of women in bikinis you know, in public signage. He's bringing in Sharia law. Here he is running his arrogant mouth. He says he doesn't care if the UK blocks new Muslims flooding in. He'll bring them into London itself. He'll set up a safe zone. He'll set up a sanctuary city for the loving Islamicists that are all fleeing their own godforsaken countries where they're killing each other and having on average six kids. It's like... It's like sticking your arm into a bunch of piranhas with blood dripping off your hand. They're going to chew your arm off. I'm sorry, let's go to this arrogant slime bag who just can't believe how Stockholm syndromed the West is. And now he's just arrogantly rolling everyone, smiling with a big fat smile. Care's not going to stop. <laughs> and it's just the way it is. Here he is. A mayor of New York. Uh, our people, his office, uh, our people have been spoken to the police here. Uh, the advice we've received is 29 people have been injured. Uh, there were my thoughts and prayers. Uh, the advice we've received from the police service here and from the mayor's office is to carry on business as usual. I'm not going to speculate as to uh, who was responsible. I'm not going to speculate as to how the, uh, the, the police in New York should react. What I do know is part and parcel of uh, living in a uh, great global city is you've got to be prepared for these things. You've got to be vigilant. You've got to support the police doing an incredibly hard job. You've got to support the security services. And I think speculating when you don't know the facts is... Now, Macron went even further. We've put the transcript of that up on screen. We've got it in French. He just said, this is the way it is. And by, by the way, his latest statements are, we shouldn't worry about being France. We're now the EU. Well, what's the EU? It's now imploding the borders of Europe. It gets rid of your internal borders, opens the external contiguous border, and then brings in the Islamicists. Then the Green Party and everybody announces, yes, Islam is the future. Submit to it. Give your daughters to it. You listen to this, and it's the most bizarre, over-the-top signals of conquest I've ever seen. And our own elites are celebrating it. So joining us is Tommy Robinson, therebelmedia.com, tommyrobinson.co.uk. He's pointed out that they're at war, the government knows they're at war, and the government is basically at war against the people with Islam, using Islam to take the average Brit's right, 
whether you're a Sikh Brit or a Christian Brit or an atheist Brit, whether you're white or whether you're a black African uh, from you know South Africa that happens to be a Christian, you don't have any rights. Only the loving Muslims do. They're the God. How did they get in this position? And what do you make of 22 dead, mainly teenage girls, uh, and the media trying to spin this and saying it's not Islamic? Alex, I've been in Manchester all day. I've listened to all the mainstream media. I've not heard one of them mention the word Islam. Not one of them. I then, I've then i started looking then into Islam in Manchester. I've travelled to an extremist mosque. When I was standing at a position outside that mosque, within a two-mile radius, radius of where I was, there have been 16 Muslims convicted or killed in terrorism. One last year who drove a suicide truck into people in Iraq. We had another Muslim called Burgos who murdered a police officer in Manchester. He comes to the country three years prior in the back of a van as a refugee. He was actually in prison. When I was in prison in 2012, he was in control of the prison. So all, all these solutions, we need to lock them up and send them to prison. Burgos is living a complete halal life after killing a police officer. He's converting and radicalizing more people. He certainly is not learning any lesson. He's adding to our problems. Um, and exactly what you've been saying is our political leaders are working with them. Tonight at six o'clock in Manchester, there is a peace vigil being held by the mayor, Burnham. He's a Labour MP called Burnham. Now, he last year shared a platform and a stage with an Islamic group called Men. This is an Islamic radical group. Another MP in this area who is the Justice Secretary for the Labour Party she received £5,000 cash given to her for her campaign by an Islamic radical group in this area. The Labour Party are in bed. So we're in bed with the radicals. When we're seeing what right now the people on our TV who are telling us we will get through this, we will beat this, are the people working hand in hand with the radical Islamic group. The people who are facilitating our daughters to be killed and raped in order for vote bank politics to regain power with the Labour Party. They're the people telling us it will all be all right. As soon as I started digging, it took me 10 minutes in Manchester to find the link. To well, we the all know what it's going to take. It's going to take the politicians that are aiding and abetting a foreign, cancerous political cult to be brought to justice. One way or another, the politicians that are letting these little girls get blown up and murdered and all the rest of it, they're the ones that are aiding and abetting. They're just as guilty as the jihadi that blew himself up. And I'm sorry, uh, you start asking the question, I'm asking you this again. When do you think people in the UK are going to start taking things into their own hands? Alex, I keep asking myself, when you've, when you've watched what's happened here, what is it going to take? What is it going to take before English men? It becomes an embarrassing situation into the world to see how weak we have become. When I, I look now, we're, I'm 20 miles from a town called Rochdale, where there's been a program where, where an entire generation of youth were gang raped and tortured by Muslim men. Those Muslim men are now out of prison after less than three or four years, and they're walking around the town of Rochdale where the girls are that they raped. What has happened to us as a, as a race? What has happened to us as a country that we're allowing this such systematic abuse of our, of our people? We're allowing now constant a concert now where our daughters are being massacred and maimed. And this is all being facilitated. And no one is doing anything. So again, I, I can't answer your question, Alex, because I ask myself every time when Lee Rigby was beheaded, I said, this has to be it. When this happened earlier and I'm watching it and I'm seeing daughters and young girls, an eight-year-old girl is gone. 22 young British people are dead. What is it going to take? What is it going to take? Well, we, we've got the same response. But there's a peace vigil in half an hour. A peace vigil. What is that peace vigil going to do? All the peace what? vigil is is a giant white flag begging these folks to kill more. And notice when we're trying to take out non-radical Islam groups in Syria, and they have this clear fake false flag chemical attack. They've been caught doing it before. They show the kids gulping and dying for air. But every time there's a suicide truck or a shooting or a bombing, they blur out the people. They won't show the dead girls. They won't show the dead bodies. It's going to take showing on the news the Islamists is taking credit, bragging how they're going to kill your sons and daughters, bragging how they're going to kill your police, bragging how they're going to do all this, and then showing the dead girls or dying girls flopping around 
with their guts hanging out begging for mommy. It's going to take showing that. What did the Black Clam, in the Black Clam theatre, where people's genitals were cut off and fed to them, where young girls were raped with knives? They were raped with knives. They were tortured. That changed nothing in France. In fact, they've surrendered even further since then. So I sit and look at this situation now and ask, what's going to happen? Probably nothing. But unfortunately, and that's heartbreaking, and then we get, we, we all get, we all get told, Alex, we get told, Paul gets told, you get told, we get told that we're rejoicing somehow in this. Rejoicing is something we've tried to prevent. We get told that we're pushing our agenda. Our only agenda is to stop this, to stop and prevent it happening to more children, to more women, to more British people. And somehow the same people who accuse us of that are the same people saying we need to invite more and work more and it's our fault and we need to accept Islam more. I'm just, I'm sick to death of it and I can't believe English men, I, I keep asking what is it going to take for you to get up? The whole country should be brought to a standstill by now. Every single city in this country should be gridlocked with men and family men coming out with the bond. Something's done. What is it going to take? And this is so well, for folks who don't know your history, you were a good guy, family guy, our family guy, put in prison for just having peaceful protest. You've been attacked literally hundreds of times, more than 50 times I've seen on video. They don't let you march anywhere in the country with, with, with uh, the, the British flag uh, because that's a sign of hate in your own country. Uh, the, the, we now have the Ninth Circuit banning the American flag here on the East Coast saying it's a sign of hate. So tell us about what happened a few weeks ago because we're going to play this video for TV and radio listeners just to give folks an idea of what it's like for you uh, when you discovered what, what uh, a local uh, member of government was up to. You went to his offices and what happened? So a, like, a local Labour Muslim MP, uh, a councillor, when these men, a gang of men, nine men, they had raped 48 young English girls, 48. When they were taken to court and prosecuted, the ex-Muslim mayor and the, and the Labour councillor went to court and gave them refer references to say what great men they were. What great men they are. I, they, the councillor was also responsible for getting them their taxi licence that they used to traffic the young English girls in whilst they were torturing and raping them. I went to see the councillor to ask him questions of how he's still in power. He's actually been promoted, Alex. He's been promoted since this. I went there and I was met by gangs of violence Gangs of Muslims who ran me off the road, who attacked me to prevent me, to prevent me talking to him. And, but again, the message we give then is, I will find that counsellor. This week I will find him. We will not let it rest because although I keep saying, what will it take? I have seen something lit in the, coming, in the last three months when I meet every English man. They're buzzing for it. And they're saying, I, I can see the support. Well, I'll say this. Nobody should look for a fight, but these people are looking for one. People need to start getting as good as they give. People need to start getting, you know, getting a little bit of you know what. It has become the, the, the worrying thing is that the government need to listen to is that the point is going to come when if you don't protect us, then English men will. English men will because they will have to. I can't understand when I'm looking at Manchester now from my hometown of Luton when our soldiers were attacked. We give birth to the United People of Luton, which then become the English Defence League, which the whole world heard about. I look at what's happening in Rochdale, and I bang my head and ask, where are the men? Where are the English men? I want to know where the English men are in Manchester. Where is the reaction to what they have just done? Where is the reaction? Because it's took me 10 minutes to find the mosque. It's took me 10 minutes to find where they are. It took me 10 minutes to find the men that have radicalised and promoted this ideology. And they're walking around this city now. But that is it. And it shouldn't have to take that. But at some point, a breaking point is going to come. And when that point does come, it's not going to be good for Islam. It's not going to be good for the decent Muslims. And that's what they need to understand. Get your house in order before you leave it upon the British public to get it in order. I think this political correctness is going to trigger things down the road where the Middle East gets turned into a glass parking lot. And I don't even want to see that happen. I, don't, I didn't want the clash of civilizations. But I just can see now that our, our elites have allied with Islam as their foot soldiers. It's dangerous. It's disgusting. I want to play a clip of you just a few weeks ago being attacked, run off the road and attacked by a bunch of out-of-control arrogant thugs because you dared try to go uh, do an interview. Here it is.
We was in Rochdale. We were in Rochdale to see Councillor Hussain. He's a Labour councillor. You've all watched a documentary for Free Girls, which shows the rape and prostitution of a generation of kids in Rochdale by Muslim gangs. Councillor Hussain went to court to defend and give a character reference for one of those men, who is now convicted in prison as part of a gang who raped 98 young English kids. <laughs> He's still part of the Labour Party. We, we went there to ask him and to tell him he has to resign. Out of respect to the victims, he has to resign. He cannot be involved in British politics. When we got there to see Councillor Hussain, there were cars waiting. Straight away they tried to block the road. There was four cars. They tried to block the road. Unfortunately, our camera wasn't even rolling because we hadn't even got out of the car. So they tried to block the road. I had to go up on the pavement to get away. Then you'll see, the f in the footage you'll see, that's where it starts, where I pull up, a car pulls up next to me, and then I ask them, why are you trying to block the road? Why are you trying to block us in? Why are you tr jumping out of cars? At that point, you'll see our car window was smashed. I then drove on. You'll see another young Muslim try and punch through the window. And then we've been proceeding in a bit of a car chase with some cars full of Muslims. That's pretty much it. And then there, were and then there was a little bit of ramming on the road as well. So... This doesn't change anything. Councillor Hussain, if you think that you can get your street gangs, and this is the worrying thing for me, is that you have street-level gangs who are drug dealers and who are pimping and prostituting young English girls, and then you have Labour representatives going to court. The ex-mayor... Right, let's stop Muslim right there. We're going to go to break. We, uh, the, the full video is up on Infowars.com, and, and we covered it just last week. We're going to go to break and come back and look at some of the facts of what just happened and the different numbers. Five million military-aged men have been brought in. This is like six, seven million refugees total. Five million in the last three, four years. 80% military-aged men. Thousands and thousands every month coming in that they admit, Interpol admits, are ISIS, are Al-Qaeda. And they're letting them back in. And Sweden and Belgium and places, you can pull up the news, they have uh, government funding and welfare for them to, quote, help them that they have PTSD like they're soldiers of sweden or soldiers of denmark or soldiers of, of of belgium and they bring them in and actually pay for them and put them on welfare i mean this is the craziest thing also when we come back i'm going to do a brief plug here because we fund this operation by the products we sell at infowarsstore.com and we have been sold out of a bunch of our best-selling products for months like super Mel vitality x2 for a few weeks and other products and those are our main funders so it's been hurting us to not have those they're back in and we have them discounted out of the gates uh for the memorial day holiday infowarsstore.com so take advantage of that you know i didn't even know let's let's punch it up on screen for tv viewers infowars.com forward slash show tommy robinson is the paul revere of the uk warning of all this everything he said turned out to be true giant child kidnapping rings per town hundreds of missing kids hundreds of dead nationwide thousands missing it it, it all came out in court he got proven he was put in prison to they should make a movie about this guy the persecution how they called him racist none of it was true he was exposing people that were racist and now i didn't even know that he was late even coming on with us he's marching to the vigil that the politicians involved working with the Muslims are holding the vigil, and then and then his screen just went dead. I was uh, going to see if we can get him back on as he goes to the uh, vigil, but we just lost him. Wow, that's how fast stuff's moving here. We, we called Tommy. He said, "Could you come on?" He goes, "Yes, I can come on." And then during the break, he goes, "I got to go. The vigil's in five minutes. It's starting now, but I'm only two blocks away." And then he starts walking up to the vigil right as the feed cut. So th this is real TV, folks. Real radio. Wow. That guy is amazing. I'll be honest, I used to see his stuff 10 years ago and go, oh, look at that racist or whatever. Just as the media said it. That's how weak-minded even I am. Folks, they lie about everybody. If there was a group of people in Mexico that had come from some other country raping and murdering, if they were white people, I'd say kill them. Or if they were blue people, you know? I mean, at a certain point, you don't care what color you are. When you're being killed and overrun, you have a right to stand up against it. And this is Islamic, and they prey on women, and I'm tired of it. I, we're, we, we got his feedback. I've got to do this, or we won't even be on the air. Briefly, we've got all our best products. 50% uh, off on colloidal silver. We only do that a few times a year. That is Memorial Day special. The best high-quality colloidal silver out there. 
40% off Survival Shield X2, unbelievable. 30% off Super Mail. Even though all these things were just sold out for months, they were all sold out. Super Mail for months, X2 for weeks, months on the silver, sold out, but 40% off, unbelievable. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com, a little bit of profit we make each order. We need big, big sales to make it back to fund the operation. So please support us today. Infowarslife.com, Emrix Essentials, the new line of organic self care products from shampoo to sunscreen to 10 to 1 uh, mouthwash. It's all there, deodorant, you name it. Okay, let's go to Manchester. We're reporting from the ground. Is Tommy Robinson. Uh, Tommy, wow, tell us what you're doing, where you're going. Um, so we're walking through the city. And um, we was here today during the day. You'll be able to see the video's gone up on Rebel, um, where there was there was there was bomb scares everywhere. People were running through the shopping centres. E even now, I think if a balloon went off, the whole city would run from fear. And there's a vigil. So organised by Andy Burnham, who is the MP who is working with the Muslim extremist group, who shares a platform with them. He's organising the vigil. He's now the mayor of Greater Manchester. He's in charge of the whole police force. So, um, yeah, he's organized a vigil for people to come together. This is one of the vigils which you see across. And so he can be the hero. You. He can mow the uh, peace. Let's run up white flags. Let me be your boss. Just keep, lay down. Let us tie, Let us put the handcuffs on. Get in the yellow Volkswagen. Let us get you in the basement. Go ahead. That's it. That's it. And, and that's what I, I didn't even know this. I've only just started researching Manchester since I got up here this morning. And um, again, just. I've only had to scratch beneath the surface. It took me 10 minutes to find things out. 10 minutes to find things out, but I believe now this is one of these vigils where it doesn't do anything, does it? I, I understand the feeling of coming together. It's not going to... But it makes the people the that allowed it to happen look like they care about everybody and the conciliators. Oh, they're, they're the people standing up there. They're the people who are going to be standing up there telling us how we'll come through this, we'll stop this, while sharing a platform and appeasing the groups who are radicalizing the people in these communities. Tommy, how far away are you from the vigil? I have no idea, Alex. <laughs> earlier, I thought you said you were pretty close. Four but, but, minutes, four, four minutes, okay. four or five minutes. Hold on, we're going to come right back in 70 seconds. This is riveting, uh, amazing. On the streets of Manchester with the man who's been imprisoned for protesting or filming Muslims. Because Muslims are God.